Hello and welcome to Season 5, Episode 4 of Fabrically Speaking Live. I'm your sick host, Claire Rowley, and I'm uh, going to get my ear on here. Thanks for joining me, everyone. I'm guessing you can hear me because I haven't logged in yet. There we go. I now confirm that you can hear me. And uh, thankfully, I have a mute button so that if I need to cough or anything, I can do that. So forgive me that I'm sick still. Hi, JJ. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Judy. Hi, crazy quilting. Crazy crafting. There's many different ways that you can transfer your designs onto your fabric. And I have covered many in my prior videos at my YouTube on my YouTube channel. And today I was preparing to, to uh, do one of them. Let me mute my phone. And I got ink all over myself and didn't print on the correct side of the stabilizer. So I'm just going to trace. And thankfully I have the Caterpillar tablets, which you should all have received your tablets. The edge to edge mat that I have here, they are still waiting on those. I found at the show this incredible fabric I thought I'd share with you so you can see how pretty it is. Well, that camera could be repositioned. If you're new to the show and you saw me at a physical show, share with everybody your experience at the show. And for those of you who don't know that I am attending shows again, isn't this luscious? Oh my goodness. My hand kind of matches it because I got green ink all over it. I have the link in the description below the video if you're on YouTube for the link to this actual design that I plan on drawing out. And had I not taken all my markers home, I could use Sharpie markers to transfer this design. Since I have the yellow, I'm thinking, why not? The etch to etch mat that I was speaking of for the Caterpillar light tablets has no lines on it, so when you place a design beneath it, you don't have to worry about it moving on you, and then you can take your fabric and just lay it over the top. This is uh, not white fabric. This is like a really, really pretty seafoam green color that I think will blend real nicely with any inking that I choose to do on this so I can trace the bird right on the fabric using a sharpie marker or any alcohol pen that you may have so you basically are coloring on your fabric and we will go over this with thread. There we go. And the most important elements. Are what we really need to draw on here. It's more of a just an outline to get you lined up. This, this is a good opportunity to draw 
your stitch direction lines on the fabric as well. And I know I don't have my tablet in the right position, so I keep un or turning it off. If you were wondering where I was for the last few weeks, the week before last and prior to that, the week before that, I was at shows, one in Phoenix, Arizona, and the other in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. And those of you who live in the Seattle area, I am coming to the Puyallup Sewing and Stitchery Expo. So if you're in that area and you want to drop by, I'd love to see you. Let's see what I, I'm going to use the iron erase marker for the rest of this tracing. And uh, get the outline of the flowers in here. I haven't hired anyone for my booth in Puyallup yet. If you're in the area and you're interested in working the show and possibly also then being able to walk the show because you got a pass and I pay for parking, let me know. I think that's something that I haven't done yet. Let's see. Well, I hope I don't sound too pathetic today. <coughs> Excuse me. If you're waiting on a presser, know that I will be making them tomorrow, hopefully. You know, I, I really have to be able to breathe with a mask on. And we've been in a snowed out situation here or snowed in. I think this will be enough here. I have the uh, outline the bird as well. I had that blue color. Where is it? Here it is. I hesitate to do too much. Don't want to cover up the eye. I'm pretty sure his chest is also blue. We'll find out in a minute. And we can peek. What did you do during my absence? Share with the group. What is on your sewing table? I debated whether or not you could tolerate listening to me sniffle. Or if you would be wanting me to not be live today. Did I make the right choice? Am I tolerable? I think that's adequate. Then it's now determining which of the three octahoop sizes is best for this design. And that's really based on your preference. If you don't want to have to reposition the design, then you'll want to use the largest hoop possible for this. And so the large frame is best for me to be able to embroider this completely out without having to rehoop. 
in your kit, you receive three feet of the stick and tear, which is the one with the tree frog on the label. If you really get into embroidery, we have it in lots of different sizes. This is a 60 foot roll. And right now, we have a coupon running for Valentine's Day. And it is the Be Mine, all uppercase. You just type out Be Mine. And then you just trace around the hoop. And I recommend cutting with paper scissors. So that you don't damage your fabric. I mean your fabric scissors. It was so nice to see everybody, and there was a lot of hugging going on at the show. So I got sick. It was quite an eventful few weeks. I also got rear-ended. It was a challenging couple days there. Got to see my cousins that live in Sandy in the Phoenix area. And hang out with Amy, better days, in the booth. You don't mind a little sniffling? My nose is all red, probably. Hi, Sarah. <coughs> Excuse me. So, actually, I am under two weeks of being sick. I got... I came down with symptoms last Tuesday. So nine days being sick. I cannot wait for the symptoms to be gone. And if any of you are in the Creative Feed Extensive, I'll be having an episode next week for that. And I have not forgotten the VIPs. I just got to figure out how to divide myself into four people. Yes, Amy did make it to the show. And it was nice. A few people from the chat popped in. Picola, I don't know if she's logged in here today, was one that visited. Now we take and peel the release liner off of the stick and tear stabilizer, which is not paper. Our product is made of polyester fabric, so it doesn't wash away. It is permanent, yet it tears like paper. And then you apply it to the bottom of the frame. Peel off the actual paper release liner. <coughs> so sorry. And then stretch the stabilizer until it's taut. The goal is to not have any wrinkles on the back of this, or on this stabilizer. And could iron hold light to the back of this fabric to give it more body? Or just layer the fabric right on top. Now I will start to play. I'm not sure what I'm going to make this into. sure it won't be that big so my wrist is a little better this week <laughs> I really feel like I turned 60 and then 
Okay. And I'm not going to even say it. Amy was tired, huh? There we go. The ideal thread to use for machine embroidery is the lingerie thread that you find under the nylon threads inside of creativefeet.com and using it in the white for light colors and the black for dark colors. It has a stretchy nature to it, which increases your bobbin tension, so you're less likely to have your needle thread come to the top. And you can also use an embroidery needle in the machine to also in, in enhance the stitch and or make it easier for the sewing machine to pick up the thread with less shredding of the eye of the, or less shredding above the eye of the needle. Another needle that you could use is the um, Super Universal. And I generally will start with the color that is furthest away. In this case, I'm going to be drawing this in more of a two-dimensional design, not trying to give it a shadow or anything. And uh, I can make the belly a little bit rounder. Let's see. Where's that yellow thread or yellow pen? To use the octa you're going to remove your machine's snap-on adapter, which is the gadget that attaches your feet. If you don't have a snap-on sewing machine, you'll remove your machine's presser foot in its entirety. If you have not yet wound a bobbin of nylon thread, the thing, there are things to consider before doing so. One is, these spools are not designed to go on your machine and sit on a post and have the machine pull the spool and spin it. If you, if you put it on your machine like that, what you'll have is the bobbin get too tight and that can cause what some people call exploding bobbin even though the bobbin doesn't actually explode. Looking for an empty bobbin here. So I'm gonna wind a bobbin with you. If I don't have one, I think I do. I have a bobbin. And anything I can do to speed up the show today so that I don't drive you crazy So nylon lingerie thread in the bobbin, 40 weight embroidery thread in the needle. You can use cotton, rayon, or polyester for your colored thread on the top. I had that thread out, there we go. We'll start with the belly of the bird. This is the Polyfast number 3262. Should you want to duplicate what I'm, how I'm embroidering this. You wish I sold it bobbins? Well. <laughs> One full bobbin of 100% nylon lingerie thread takes about five minutes to, to wind. And most people would not believe that the thread was worth that price. So that's one reason it hasn't been sold that way. But just remember, when you do wind a bobbin of it, you don't have to wind one for a really long time. So, maybe that makes up for you having to be the winder. Okay. I 
have a different camera angle this week. Be interesting to see what you guys think. The OctaHoops also allow you to use these little handles and the handles drop into the holes on the frame. So you just peel back a little bit and expose that little hole right there. And then if you need glasses, put them on. Had to mute myself for a moment. Go ahead and bring your bobbin thread up. And you'll notice the difference in thickness. The nylon thread is stuck in the bobbin drawer, I think. <laughs> there we go. So you have a considerably thicker thread in the needle than you do in the bobbin. That allows you to lay more thread on top without adding too much heaviness to the fabric itself. And I'm going to reduce the thread tension on the machine as well to a 3.0 from a 4.0. In essence, one stitch tension setting lower than what the machine was set up for initially or is automatically programmed to use. Ah, thank you, JJ. The next thing that I do is I position my little elbow pillows. So that I can rest my elbows on the table and that takes the tension off your upper back and between your shoulder blades. If you've ever done free motion work and gotten really stiff, that's why, because almost every other method requires elbows be raised to some degree and that causes a constant tension on those muscle groups. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. And then you begin to draw. My left hand is stabilizing the paper. Like if I were to draw this, it would be representing the paper and this representing the, the pen that you then draw with. My speed control is set to zero. <laughs> and then it's stitch direction. So I know that these little stamen, I believe is what they're called, come out from the middle. And this would be better if, for me to embroider with white thread first and do the yellow second. You can also use this to outline, knowing that that green ink will iron away. So I'm just drawing. You also don't have to fill this, these flowers in. You could use them just as they are and leave the fabric showing through. And I mean, you have so much freedom in free motion. It's really in, entirely up to you what you end up creating. And nobody knows if you did a less than perfect job, except for you, unless you tell them. This is my go-to thing to teach you when I'm not feeling well. So if you're thinking I, it wasn't that long ago that I taught you this, you're correct, but that's because I don't feel good today. And this is relaxing for me to do. It's more like I believe when I was a little girl, I used to love getting sick because it meant that I got art supplies. My mom would go and buy me a paint by number set. Now I can make this look more like feathers as well. 
Let's see if I can get that other camera to work in a second here. No, it's working. Okay, it's not working in here. Come on. Why not? Okay, well, it's just not going to do it today. Sorry about that. Why not? Looks like they're going to be working. Oh, I remember what I need to do. Okay. Deactivate and activate it. Yay, okay. And you can see how those stitches came out. The colors are definitely off on this camera, but that looks fine. I'm going to Think about how feathers lay over one another and so the bottom I can't think you guys I'm having a hard time finding my words Because I used Sharpie marker under there, I don't have to fill it in all the way. But what I'm primarily doing is kind of drawing the impressions of these feathers and then I'm going to come back with a zigzag stitch. So this is just a regular straight stitch. I can use a zigzag stitch or I can imply or pretend to have a zigzag stitch by moving the hoop in a zigzag motion. And when I do that, I slow the machine down and move the hoop more dramatically, which increases the amount of thread laid down for every stitch. Paint my numbers. <laughs> I love to paint my numbers. Another thing that I enjoyed as a child was doodle art. I was looking for that to give us a gift for someone for Christmas and I couldn't find one. What is your favorite thing to do when you're not feeling well? can give you a really good close-up of this. The camera will focus. It's 
See how it has kind of a feathery look to it? And now I'm going to do the next layer and work my way up the bird so each feather row will overlap the one below it. Try to save you watching me do that. Sleep is your favorite thing to do when you don't feel good. <laughs> Sleep has been challenging lately. So once again, I am creating a feather design by moving the hoop. And you can do that by drawing the center of the feather and then hopping out. So I'm going from outside of the feather to the middle, outside to the middle at an angle. And then going back up the other side. been trying to send out newsletters but our site needs to be there's some issue with our website so if if you have not received a newsletter and you're frustrated because it's better for you to hear about new things on our newsletter and you want to keep up with things make sure you join my school which is the link where you see learn in the chat because in the school, I, ha I didn't have any trouble. I was able to send out information. If you did not receive something from me today and you are a member of the school, check your notification settings. You may not have them set correctly. Also, if you turn off your notifications on your cell phone, it turns off all notifications, including those from people you may be wanting to hear from. Coming up again and... What's really neat about changing your stitch direction like this is that it makes it appear as if you use different colors of thread, even though this is just one color of yellow so far. This is also easier for me to do when I'm not talking this particular stitch process. We still have snow on the ground. We got 20 inches of snow last week. One of the reasons I could not come into the office is because they couldn't remove the snow fast enough out of the dry, out of the parking area. And as of yesterday, there's still snow up to the door. Something I didn't anticipate when I moved in here, that they wouldn't be able to clear snow. Doesn't that look like a different color thread, like some type of a variegation, but it's not. Just going up and coming back at an angle and moving the hoop in a larger motion. So the bird has feathers instead of just being stitched in. This also may be easier for you to do with the hoop in a particular direction. So right now I'm at an angle and I can't see as well. So I'm a little bit stressed out. I'm going to turn it this way. And now I can see better when I go up and come over. I'm also going to change the handle to the next hole. Keeping my elbows down. And you could draw lines for each feather to help you not lose your your way.
doing that with ink as well before would make it even easier. How many of you are dealing with snow right now? I know our snowstorm moved across the country. And how much did you guys get? My sister is in New Jersey and she was sharing photos with us. If you hear a plucking sound, it's because you're sitting in one spot too long. And what you may not be noticing is that I'm moving my fingers like that. I'm not moving the hoop like this. Just small movements with my fingers and that makes it a lot easier. with my elbows resting. And the machine at a slower pace. This is about half speed. It does take longer to embroider with a feathery look like this, but the impact is worth it. I'm ready for spring. Are you guys ready for spring? I'm ready to test out my hummingbird bird bath that I designed. I designed and got it ready after the hummingbird season. And we've moved it into the house because it's so pretty. And then at some point I'll edit the video and sh so you guys if you want to make your own hummingbird bird bath fountain you can spring is your worst time JJ another way to do this would be to print on our cover up, which is the vinyl that we offer, and it comes in white. You can tape it to a piece of paper and print in color right over it. So you start at the bottom of the bird and work your way up. For the feathers to overlap as they would in nature. And on these, I'm, because the blue feathers are going to lay over the top, we have these be more subtle. This was the ink that I got on it, and that was Inkjet 
printer ink. If I use some alcohol, it'll blend or smear that out. So it'll, it won't look bad when it's all said and done. didn't really anticipate to finish this whole thing here today. Now I'm going to hop over from this to the one over there. Doing so I can just cut my thread and bring it over. And then bring up your bobbin thread. If you don't, it may not stitch. Now this time I got away with it. when you just do the lines and not color in. Time for a thread change. And it's important when you change your colors of thread that you raise the foot. If you don't raise the foot, then the tension discs are not open. And if you change your thread with the tension discs closed, the thread will lay on the outside. And if your machine is not an electronic machine, the thread will fall to the bottom and create a bird's nest, which is not ideal. And I feel like I feel like doing the green instead of the bird right now, just to get all the leaves etched in. And might actually leave it that way and use ink and color in and fade out so that I have that subtle watercolor feeling to the background. I probably will put white on those. I don't know. What should I do? Should I ink in the background colors and the flowers and only have the bird be stitched in? We can do whatever we want. So right now it's 15% off at creativefeet.com for Valentine's Day. Typing in the word Smoosh together, be mine as one word, all uppercase. We'll give you that discount at creativefeet.com should you not have the octa hoops. Now I've lowered the foot and the thread is now, the tension is back on the thread. With the foot up, you can pull your thread. When the foot's lowered, you then can no longer just pull the thread through the eye of the needle. Which would be cool to ink the background colors or to do a combination of both. As I did with the feathers, I'm going to also do the leaves this large stitch. It's going to cover up most of that green that I didn't draw very nicely. Now I could use a zigzag stitch to do this as well, but it is harder and haven't really shown how to do that on this channel. Would you like me to show you how to use the zigzag stitch? I'm going to go back around the leaf to enhance it even more. Once you get the hang of the octahoops, you might find that you want things to go faster and filling in with a zigzag stitch does make it go faster. However, 
your zigzag stitch, your needle's going to swing left and right. So you, if I have it in this position, the, the thread is going to go left and right now. I want it to come out at an angle, so I need to make sure that my needle swing is lined up with this stitch direction. And I can select a wide zigzag as well. So now instead of me moving the hoop, the needle moves itself. And you go up. And then in order to keep the stitch direction the same, now I'm going to be steering or driving the car, steering the hoop by moving it side to side. So it is a little bit more challenging. See, I have to turn again, and now I fill in by moving the hoop side to side and connecting. But it is a beautiful look, isn't that pretty? Now for the next, the other side, I can either spin it all the way around or pull out the handle and spin the hoop. Yeah, I definitely want to spin it all the way around. Am I? Do I? <laughs> I can't think. <laughs> oh, goodness. I'm trying not to feel sorry for myself for being sick, but it's not working. <laughs> okay, elbows down. I can even go wider on the width. I'm going to take it all the way to seven, and this will speed up the entire process and make it even more challenging because that needle's swinging so much further. So rotating the hoop. And then fill it in. Now once again, I'm gonna switch to a straight stitch and show the division of the leaf by coming up that middle. So for me, because I've gotten really good at using a straight stitch as a zigzag stitch, I feel like it just takes longer than if I use the straight stitch and just slow the machine down so you get the hang of it. A zigzag stitch may be a better option for you. Gosh, sorry you guys. And the sewing machine doesn't have a width this wide. At the deepest part of that leaf, this was about 20 millimeters. Now we're at about a six millimeter wide swing. And it tapers around the petal. So all of that takes skill and this is really not that hard to do. Just slowing the machine down and making bigger stitches so you're really not, not sewing as fast. Even though the machine is running slower. And the reason you're capable of doing this and the fabric doesn't pucker is because of the shape of the octi hoops. If you were to try this with a round hoop probably would have your fabric start to slip. Our stick and tear attaches to the hoop, allowing the fabric to lay relaxed, allowing you then to, to stitch out such big designs. Slow down the machine and zigzag. There we go. Taper as you go. Isn't that pretty how the thread sh has that sheen to it? Now this is the polyfast thread and it has what they call a trilobal cut on the surface of the thread that makes the thread itself have that diamond look to it. All this time I'm, I haven't been using my glasses. 
think the sun just shifted. Once again, that's like a 25 millimeter stitch length or width because that's how far I'm able to swing this. And your sewing machine simply can't do that. This is the true color of the thread. Isn't that beautiful? And that little handle is what I was moving in this kind of a motion. So I think I will be inking in some of these leaves to make it appear more dimensional. We're located near a hospital, so if you guys hear sirens in the background when I go live like this, that's why. I get away with not tying my thread or pulling up my thread every time because this machine allows me to. So you want to make sure that if you don't have a computerized machine that you bring up your bobbin thread. This is another way of filling in quicker is to draw first to kind of lay down some color and then after you have color laid down, then you can do your large stitches over the top. If this is going to be on a pillowcase or a towel, you, do, you don't want to have stitches that wide. You want to divide them in half. You don't want a stitch that's so long that a finger or a toe could fit beneath the stitch. So you would do two stitches to go that length. But if it isn't, well, there's no reason why you can't extend out for a 30 or 40 millimeter wide stitch like I'm doing here. And remember, if you just if you have a round hoop and you've ever tried embroidery with your home machine, go ahead and try that and you'll see what will happen to your fabric. The octa hoop shape makes it possible for you to do this without changing tension. One of the reasons I like using this straight stitch is that I don't have to rotate the hoop as much. This is a good example for the zigzag stitch again, so I'll switch to a wide width. And now you can see which way the, hoop, the needle's going to swing. And outline while turning the hoop. My foot control got away from me. And then come down the center. joining or blending those two points together, filling in in between. Straight 
straight stitch again around down that center. And you can straight stitch in little movements like that to create a more dimensional straight stitch outline. You can also come up and go back to create enhancements over the fill-in stitch. In a second I'll give you a close-up of what these look like. The more you do these types of techniques, the more intense or impressive your stitching looks and it increases the value if you're interested in selling your work. You can see that and I'll have close-up photography in the school for you to see. See how the feathers look on the belly. Let me switch camera angles here. It's a little dark. This is the one where I went across. You can't really see it. Can't see it as good. I prefer this look where I have the, the giant stitch that goes across. What do you like? Do you like that more or the fill in? Ah, I'm ruining my needle. So that's the zigzag method and that is the straight stitch to look like a zigzag stitch method. Mesmerizing. Thank you, Mary. You guys are so nice. I don't feel mesmerizing today. Hi, Sharon. I'm glad you're feeling better. All right, I'm gonna put some I'm going to put some white thread in so I don't lose the white elements of the bird. I'm a little wheezy. I hope you're not hearing that. I was looking all over for this because I was going to take it to the show. And it was in the trash when I got here. I put it in something. Apparently, I put it in the trash can. Yeah, because, uh oh, I forgot what I was going to say, I can't get this to come off. Some things take two hands. Because the fabric itself is not white this white thread is really going to show on the fabric as white, which is one reason I tend to not use pure white fabrics when I do inking and other things so that the white really shows up nicely. You can, however, use white fabric should you like. It's just you need contrast going all the way around the white then for the white not to just dissolve into the fibers. And this whole time I have the white lingerie thread in the bobbin and you'll see that none of the white thread came up to the top. For those of you who have embroidery machines, how far along would you be if this was an embroidery machine? Do you think that you'd be this far along? This is the time when I'm I'm thinking a zigzag stitch is going to be the fastest. So 
zigzag stitch, swing of the seven millimeter wide. Thread tension down one number less than normal. Outlining the petal. Now swing up. Making sure I'm rotating the hoop. Coming into the point and going and feathering out on the outside of the petal. Now I'm going to turn the hoop for the next petal. Take the handle to the next hole. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Coming into the point, coming over and outlining the petal. Turning the hoop like I'm driving a car. Since I already have the outline in yellow, I'm not going to outline. I'm going to let that yellow still remain as the outline. Isn't that pretty? Can you see the sheen of the white? Oops. It's not going to make you... <coughs> oh, sorry, you guys. So you see how much faster that is than uh, straight stitching. Slow movement of the hand. It's uh, just like when I show you monogramming. And then a slow side to side, rotating, coming back to the center of the, pe of the flower and feathering out. Again, I'm going to spin it. It's been a long time since I've done an embroidery like this. And then the shadows caused by the light and the sheen of the thread will make the petals look more dimensional. Once again, spin. Whoopsie. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Oops, all right. You should be tying a knot and all that. I'll go over that area with a straight stitch to secure the threads. Oh, I forgot that leaf. the right hole for the handle. It doesn't feel like a seven millimeter right swing. It was smaller. Let's 
just a straight stitch, just a tiny knot. And you can also raise the foot and slide over and then lower the foot, but that does waste thread. long of a stretch. Whoops, I went out in the wrong area. It's harder for me to get the stitches to look uniform because it's such a long stretch there. So I'm going to go back to zigzag. It's a good opportunity for you to practice though. You can straight stitch and then go over it afterward. Whoops. What I'm doing is lowering my thread tension because I change stitch and it changes the tension. So drive the car. I feel like I've gone longer than an hour. I'm relaxed. So once again, if you're waiting on a compressor, I'm thinking that tomorrow I should feel better, good enough to do it. If not, the weekend is supposed to be nice and warm. I'm going to switch to straight stitch. No. Yes, but I'm going to enhance the bird now according to the drawing. Which I have here. I can see that on the tips of the feathers there's white and there's white going down the tail as well. case it's easier to just use the straight stitch and zigzag by moving the hoop in a zigzag motion. I also plan to come to Salt Lake City in Boise, Idaho. Not sure where you're all located. Not ready to get on a plane yet. Did think about doing Lakeland, Florida. But I have to be home as well in order to teach the Creative Feed Extensive and not ignore the VIPs. And I tried to go live at the show, but they've made going live more challenging. probably end here because I think it's four huh no it's only three I'm doing good Fine, I'm gonna keep going look at how much I was able to do in such a short amount of time and you guys could as well but you got to start if you haven't played with the octahoop yet just remember 
Embroidering is easier than quilting with them. Okay, we got some white in the cheeks as well. In fact, the cheek is all white and fluffy feathers. So I'm going to use the zigzag stitch, zigzag, lower my tension, widen my width, the wider the width, the lower the tension. some white on the beak. It'll be easier to do that with a straight stitch. And we're going to put white on the eye. I had some music I could play you. So for every time I put music on when I'm live, they think I'm stealing the music instead of my license that I have. Perhaps you can put music on at your home. go far enough over. So I'm not wearing my glasses. You might find that dropping the handle when doing the zigzag stitch is However, if you do, make sure that you don't grab the hoop and lift it up. You want to make sure that it stays down and that you're just moving it side to side without pushing down as well. So I'll let you see my hand movement. Right now I'm moving over without you being able to tell I did. This is a little bit of a cheat. And this is from years of doing free motion. Cheater, cheater. Okay, there we go. And all of this with my elbows down. When you're s embroidering with a zigzag stitch, the machine at full speed, you'll make your stitches fill in better. So if you go really slow, you're more likely to make a messy looking zigzag swing. That's because you're covering more area with your movement. I just lost my paper on the floor. I 
means I don't finish my project when I'm live and I have too many unfinished projects now starting to bug me. How many unfinished projects do you think you have in your sewing room? And that comes with practice, being able to go that quick. I got a bobbin that has become part of the embroidery. I like the zigzag stitch better, I think, for this. I'm going to go back over this with a zigzag. zigzag technique used to be the other way around when doing free motion we would consider the straight stitch the advanced but with a straight stitch you can do portrait work you could lay a painting or a picture of a person and stitch right over the picture hard. Oops. The hoop wasn't able to move because of the stand for my camera. That's just me cheating to get over here without having to change stitches. Sometimes I divide an area into sections as well to make it easier for the brain.
some of the petals. So the idea is to do all of one color. Less thread changes makes it go quicker and you're less likely to end up with a bird's nest on the back side from forgetting to lower your foot and raise the foot and lower the foot when my bottom thread's almost empty. Please just let me finish this petal. Pretty please. Come on, a little bit more. And that's because I didn't have a full bobbin. I got away with it. So I did all the white. Let's see. That's too bright. There we go. What do you think? Starting to come alive. And it is a different look to what I do when I just use a straight stitch and keep the stitches just going straight up and down for one part and diagonally for the other. Notice the difference? Almost got away with that whole bobbin. I'm raising the presser foot to open the tension this and removing the thread. If you can't pull the thread out, it means your tension discs are closed. You need to raise the lever to open those discs up. I have a dark and I'm going to use that for the blue. And I'm trying to just say black, black nylon, monof black nylon lingerie thread. So the darker color will be less likely to show when coming up. And I'm grabbing my color. This is number 2132. However, if I just use that, it won't have the dimension that I'm like that I want to have. Are these the same color? 2155. And then this will be a shadow, and that's 5431. Whoops. <laughs> Got my head in the way. So this I can take under the belly to give it more dimension or to have this be the, the center of each feather. We'll see first. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this color first to see if just the stitch direction doesn't create that look just as we achieved with the belly. How many of you are still there? And let's see, it's 3.31. Yeah, I'm impressed. I didn't think I was going to do this good today. My tweezers are not where they belong. Because I took my stuff to the shows.
Come on. There we go. I missed you all. I really did. And I felt so bad not being able to do more video at the shows, but I'm out of practice at being live and doing all that's required. Yes, I do need to not steal from my set. But I really only, I decided and I had to leave in two weeks and we were sold out of everything. So in order to do these two shows, we had to make two shows worth of shows of product. And I had to do all the travel arrangements. So it was quite a bit more than I'm, I'm known for overdoing. Well, I definitely overdid during that time. Oops, wrong camera. Sorry, I had to mute you. Isn't that pretty? I still have to go back with green. I'm trying to decide which way to do the head. I think I'm going to use a straight stitch and if I want to enhance it after, I'll do that. Lower the foot. Find the foot control, bring up that bottom thread. I can't even find my little embroidery scissors, so I'm using my shears. I don't think I have lingerie thread on. I think I have woolly nylon. And if that's the case, it, it may come up. That's not good, so I'm not going to get away with that. Another alternative is to match the thread color in your bobbin or get it close to the same color in your bobbin. And since I have this here, rather than taking the time to wind a bobbin, I'll just use one of my Deco Bob bobbins. You know you're not well when you can't remember if you put your bobbin in right after putting in thousands of bobbins over 45 years of putting bobbins in. Hi, Nancy. Each Thursday at 2, unless I'm live at a show in person, which I will be at the end of this month. Welcome. You haven't joined us before. Everybody give her a warm welcome. Your name sounds familiar. And I dropped the picture on the floor. I'd show it to you. And I, actually, I'm going to get it because... I don't really have anything to go on if I don't look at it. It's a little bright. <coughs> Excuse me, so sorry. This is what I'm using.
oh goodness so you can see that's that's a lot lighter than what I've chosen here and I can go over this with a little bit of a lighter color afterward to to give it the sheen or the glow that you would get from a real feather Sorry, I had to mute myself. Once again, hold on. I'm starting to melt. Having a cold is no fun. are coming in after I already started. This is the OctiHoop and it allows me to hold on to this little handle so that I can draw. Using just a straight stitch right now on the petals I used a zigzag stitch and I did show these and you can rewind this after the live is over you'll be able to pause, rewind, fast forward. This should be helpful. And the beak is going to be dark. So we'll come over here. wondering how I got the drawing on here, I traced it using the Caterpillar Light tablets that we offer at creativefeet.com. You can also print the designs out on our stabilizer, on our hold light and our cover up, and then embroider over the stabilizers. speed on the sewing machine. You don't have to go that fast, but after you get good at it, and you're not as afraid of breaking needles, because breaking needles is usually caused by you lifting up the frame up above the bed of the machine. You'll find yourself wanting to go faster as well. Are any of you using them enough to where you're Starting to find yourself wanting to go faster? Share. And this is for any sewing machine, by the way. You just need a straight stitch. these feathers to be puffy. So instead of just drawing, I'm going to create feathers like I did on the, the belly with the yellow. And this is done by sewing with the machine running slower and moving the hoop in a zigzag motion. So now we have these feathers going over the yellow feathers. Whoops. I'll be able to cut that thread in a second. So 
so that is my first thread loop in all of this stitching. Something that you can't hide when you're live is the problems that can sometimes arise. And those of you who are here now, it is February 15th, the day after Valentine's Day, and I'm officially not feeling good. So I'm a little bit quieter than I normally am, and this is 2024, so know that I will, when you watch this later, be no longer sick anymore. This is a zigzag stitch without a zigzag, just moving the hoop in a zigzag motion. And this entire time my feed dogs have been up and not caused any trouble at all. I'm gonna cut the thread and hop over here. I'm going to switch to a zigzag stitch again and keep it about three and a half because these feathers are long and maybe a little wider. Go to five. Keeping the hoop at a slight angle, the same angle that the feathers would come out. Next feather overlaps that one. to a straight stitch, tie a knot. Sorry guys, I'm, I'm starting to have to cough too much. I think I'm going to have to stop and my body is demanding it. I hope that you enjoyed watching despite me sniffling and coughing throughout. If you're new to my channel and you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I sure hope you'll do so today. Do know that I also have a free online school called Create with Claire Rowley. It is in the link 
below in the description of this video now that I'm about to go and uh, starting to melt. I will be in touch with all of you in the school very soon and hopefully we will soon be able to send out our newsletter. I've extended the Be Mine coupon to run through till Sunday night at midnight since we didn't get to get our newsletter out early and it is our Valentine special. You receive 15% off your entire order at creativefeet.com. Thanks for joining me today, you guys, and um, see if I can figure out how to end the show. If you have any questions that I didn't address, know that my eyes are on the sewing, so it's difficult to follow the chat, uh, that you can bring these questions up to me in the school. When you go into the school, there's a chat. Type in the chat. Everybody gets to hear your question or read your question, and then I respond, and then everybody benefits from my response. With that, thank you so much for joining me. I love you guys. See you next week. Bye.